Welcome to an SFB Addict video. Size matters. Let's look at some Star Trek ship classes. The exact length in meters isn't that important. It's about relative size. The DY-100, the first deep space vessel, pre-warp, later gets converted to warp. It is about half the length of a cruiser's warp nacelle. The F-1300, a civilian freighter, a little longer than a cruiser's nacelle. The Antares, it's about the length of a cruiser. And then we have military vessels, or Starfleet vessels. The PC, or Patrol Corvette, is the smallest vessel Starfleet would have. It's used for piracy or policing patrols, often seen at Colony World's bases and major trading routes. Armament's typically about one photon and a couple of phasers. Then we have a frigate, the first full saucer section craft. It's very small. They are very numerous. Not a ship to be seen in a battle line or line of battle. Again, it's used for piracy and short duration missions of all kinds. Typical armament is about two photon launchers and three phaser banks. And then we have the destroyer, the tin can. Again, not a battle line ship, but it does have three photons and about five phaser banks. These are the first long duration mission ships. They would operate in flotillas of three or more for military operations and escort duties. And then we have the light cruiser, the first battle line ship. Typical armament is two photons, five phaser banks, or four photons, four phaser banks. Long duration missions, some will have the nacelles above or below. The configuration will vary from ship manufacturer to ship manufacturer. Some will even have an external gun deck for more firepower. About 20% more expensive than a destroyer, but they often operate alone. They are not as plentiful in numbers as destroyers and the other smaller ships. The larger the ship, the fewer of them there are. And then we have the cruiser, a battle line ship. Typical armament is four photons and six ba phaser banks. Long duration missions, some may be heavy cruisers with less crew and laboratory space in exchange for two more phaser banks. And again, there are many configurations. Some will have the warp nacelles above the saucer section and some below. And then we have Dreadnought. It is a larger cruiser designed as the center of a line of battle. These never operate alone. There's a captain and higher ranking flag officer aboard. The captain fights the ship and the flag officer fights the entire battle fleet. These are not long duration mission ships. They spend most of their existence docked at star bases and battle stations. It is rare to see these deployed away from such bases unless it's a time of war. And then we have the battleship. Very rare ships, possibly never even built. This would be the heart of an attack fleet built to take out a home world's defenses like Romulus or Kronos. It is a ship of war.
Now the size comparisons. PCs are very small. Call it 40 units of measure and width. The frigate is larger at about 60 units of measure in width. A destroyer, larger still, at roughly 75 units of measure. A light cruiser, larger still at 100 units of measure. The cruiser or heavy cruiser, 120 units of measure. The dreadnought, about 140 units of measure. And the battleship at 160 units of measure and width. The warp nacelles also get longer and larger with the increases in size. The saucer sections get a larger radius and more decks the larger you get in size. You do not get a dreadnought by taking a heavy cruiser and simply adding a third warp nacelle. Dreadnoughts are larger and that extra mass is why the third nacelle is needed. It's needed to make a larger warp bubble to accommodate that mass. Here we can see the freighter class sizes compared to a cruiser. So the DY100 about half the length of a warp nacelle, maybe a little longer. The F-1300, it's about the length, a little bit more than the length of a cruiser's warp nacelle. And the Antares freighter, it's about the same size as a heavy cruiser. And last, we have a tug. The tug would have a saucer section the size of a light cruiser, but the warp nacelles the size of a dreadnought. The reason being it needs to generate a large enough warp field to pull several cargo pods. When it comes to the multiple tug pods, the more pods you have, the weaker the warp bubble would be and the slower the tug would be. There you go. You now know why size matters.